Today I'm going to show you how I designed my handheld hot wire foam cutter in Fusion 360. We'll cover the materials needed, the all important subject of powering one, safety, and then see some of my first results trying this cool method, as well as some tips I learned in the process. And although my channel is largely about 3D design and specifically 3D printable planes, implementing other methods of construction in your designs, like foam, will significantly shed pounds off your models, making them fly all that much better. But working with hot wire foam is an awesome tool and skill for a host of other crafts and projects. With some creativity, you can create just about anything. So for my design, I started with a simple hand grip shape built around comfort and balance to keep my digits safely away from a scalding hot bit of wire. And then I model the frame that holds the nichrome wire under tension. Nichrome is unique in that it provides a higher level of resistance than other types of wires, and thus it heats up when the current passes through it, allowing it to cut the foam. Now I found that because of the length of this cutter, the tension needs to be variable depending on the temperature of the wire. If you warm the wire up a bit too much, you will see the wire sag significantly. And I'll talk more about ideal temps later, but I included a turnbuckle in my design to tweak it to the exact note of twang that I think is appropriate for the job at hand. At Fusion 360, I laid out each piece as a simple sketch so I could export DXF files directly for the laser cutter. So for those that have never done this before, we're going to run through a sketch operation here, and I'm going to try to make this sketch similar to the one that I've done before. This simply is kind of a demonstration of the sketch tools, and you'll see the arrows up on top indicating which tool I'm actually using for this. So you'll see me doing an array of lines and an array of fillets to get this sketch dialed in. You'll see me changing the radius values of fillets and then using some offset commands. Here I am cleaning up the bottom of this kind of lightning hole in this uh, shape a little bit. And when I get this all defined, we're going to trim out some sections. And then I'll actually start working on my hand grip hole here. So I bring that out and start making the finger hole locations. I'm going to strike an arc, and then I'm going to duplicate that arc down. And then we're going to duplicate both of them again, four finger holes. From there, we'll start deleting and trimming and cleaning these things up. And then using the fillet command again to kind of make things a little prettier all the way around these corners. Getting close to the end here. What I should have done was continued and shown the drill holes for the sketch. Could you have made these? I'm actually going to use the whole function here to put these in problem with that is that's not actually in the sketch. You really do want to put it in the sketch because the sketch is the thing that you're going to later import. And so here you have kind of the finished part done. We get done with that and then very quickly I show you how you can apply a material to it to make it look sort of wood-like like the rest of the structure. That's pretty much it. There you have it. This way you can take the files, cut them in plywood, and assemble your own. The sketches are really all you need for a laser cut project. That means you could use just about any software that can export a vector type graphic like DWG or DXF file. The beauty of continuing on to 3D model the part like we're going to do though allows you to assemble and see exactly what fits and what doesn't. You can take measurements and experiment with different things like hardware, for instance. So let's get the hardware required.
I'll run you through doing this once. We're going to use the McMaster car component list in Fusion 360. After taking a couple measurements, I decided that I wanted to use 6 millimeter threaded machine screws. After deciding the thickness of my material, in my case it was 4 millimeter plywood, and there's a stack of three of them, then accounting for the thickness of the washers and the nut, I then decided on my length of screw. Obviously, I also need washers. I use corresponding locking nylon nuts. Now, just bringing in one component like this is really not a big deal, but your project could get messy fast if you start bringing in multiple bolts or screws. What I do to control this is I make a component specifically for the hardware, then I nest the, all the other components within it. Since this exact assembly repeats, I can simply duplicate the master hardware component. Also, the benefit to this is I can swap out nested components more easily if I decide to change something. In this model, I'm going to need this exact assembly parts about nine times. Well, what else? Well, I'm going to use a couple of alligator clips, and I will need a stranded wire that leads off from them of enough gauge and length to go back to my power source. I found later that I'd also appreciate having enough length to move those alligator clips freely to any position on the wire, so I'm only heating exactly the part of the wire between the two clips. Also, I didn't have it, but I would recommend a silicone covered wire for this part. Stranded 16 gauge worked fine for my needs. We will get to power supplies in a moment, but mine requires banana plugins to be on the wires. The nichrome wire I used is a 20 gauge. There are links for all of this in both the description and the blog link where you can download the parts for cutting. I exported DXF files for cutting the parts and dropped them into Lightburn, the software that is used to cut the Thunder laser. Think of this like your slicing software for a 3D printer. You can draw in the software, but I never do. I simply import my objects. Then I dial in speed and power settings. It's important to tweak those settings to get the cleanest and most efficient cut. You don't want the laser blasting through your parts, but you do need to ensure that they are fully cutting. There's a little trial and error on this, but my settings this time was a speed of about 40 and a power setting of 90%. And here's the laser cutting out my parts. The beauty of designing in Fusion 360 is that everything just fits if it's modeled correctly. No guessing, maybe a little sanding. You can use it just like I did, or you can tweak this model on your own to make it your own. I will say, that I was super aggressive on the length of my hot wire cutter, you likely won't need one this long. But I had visions of beautifully long, soaring glider wings in my head. Just understand that length comes with added electrical oomph. Always use a variable power supply if you can. That lets you dial in the heat so the wire just melts through the foam. Not glowing red hot, not burning the material. Smooth, clean cuts every time. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. Beautiful job. What's that supposed to look? Safety tips. Don't overpower the wire. If it glows bright, it's going to snap. And it also is going to do a very poor job cutting. Ventilation is important. Foam fumes are not your friend. Take your time dialing in the right temperature for the type of foam you're cutting. So some of you might say, Rob, I don't own this crazy expensive giant industrial laser cutter. In fact, if I did own one, it wouldn't fit in my, my house. So how am I gonna make something like this? And the answer I'll tell you is, I don't own one either. In fact, the truth of the matter is, what I do own is a membership to the Triumph Makerspace. And with that membership, I get the use of their laser cutter. In addition to that laser cutter, I also get access to their plasma cutter. I get access through their CNC machine behind me, I get access to their fiber laser. I get access to their plasma machine, to their CNC mill, to their welding stations. Oh, I think they even have a forge and a laser jet, you name it, all kinds of things, all in one price. Did I mention the 3D printers? Did I mention also all the classes that come with it and all the help from such an incredibly friendly and amazing staff? So if you're in Dallas, Texas, I encourage you to come take a look. And if you're not, 
I would encourage you to do some research on maker spaces in your area because they're coming up quite often. Additional options that you have are that there are a number of online uh, facilities, one of them being PCB Way, that provides very easy, very affordable, and quite high quality service of being able to submit files and then, then sending the parts back to you just like you would need. Uh, last option then, of course, would be reach out to me. If there's an interest in this, I'll send out something where we can actually have these files cut and sent out to you. Oh yeah, okay, I forgot also. Question number two, Rob, can I have these files? <laughs> what? Do you know how much time I spent putting these files together? So the answer to that question is yes. Yes, I'll give you these files. I'll be happy to give them to you. Uh, look on my blog post. I will not only give you the DXF files for this, I will actually provide a copy of the Fusion 360 file. So you're free to learn from it, take it apart, edit it, modify it, do whatever you want. It's yours. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a like and subscribe. But you know what I would really, really love is some comments from you guys on other things you'd like to see on these videos. Look forward to reading your comments and look forward to seeing you next time.